can we individually reach out to Jesus? There is a cry that only your heart can raise to the Lord. Maybe you came with a desire to lay hold on him for some discovered frailty, for some discovered gap in your life. You want to ask Jesus to send you help. Tonight we trust that there will be a supply of the Spirit of God. Brosto fano, brosto fetemendo sapahata. Enbo letose sabaradon tebon yataba montai. Sia pestabi loka. Baite bresto mbahadam beko mosaila. Baite bresto bola. Baito kamba bate komambasai. Bekoria semito finato. Skembe kopate goskapa yata. It's not a time to look around. There is the need for a labor unto the cognitive knowledge of the presence of God. One of the testimonies of the expressions of the kingdom in these last days is that the earth shall be filled with the consciousness of the glory. And tonight, the cry from the pulpit is that you will touch him. You will touch him. You will touch him for yourself. For by this administration, no man will say to another, There is the glory. For every man will know the glory by himself. I boyata, I kosatoma, sabo kapariastate, setuata, seka kevi mokabe, soibe kemwa seata, ate kobayatela, sovia, 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 eketo barastataya, avre delistetisia sai. For I have heard of the job speaking by the hearing of the ears and now my eyes have seen you. There is an illumination that has been allotted to every one of us believers. And tonight we cry for the consciousness of it. So do to tule tema tomoronia. A pope, bibe somba, bye bye, come, berosco parata. She have been out, she have can be some and be. You may want to grab the hand of your neighbor as you ask Jesus to help your neighbor. We refuse to journey alone, we will arrive as a family. Our transformation is built into the sightings of the glory. There is that which is image beams tonight. Until you see it, you cannot become it. And tonight as a family, we ask Jesus that we will see. 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 Oh, tabu barata, saito bobote, oh me pela babobi maskabo, so me be bahaya zamos, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. So gemre koma bobo kamba nata, saibembe be kaberi asete, 
For we all with unveiled face, beholding a in a glass, the glory of God are transformed into the same image. Sati toto kapoka, ranto fesko bagua papi komobai. Oh, shivey boy. We see you high. We see you high. We see you high. And the things that need to shift begin to shift. The things that need to change are changing. For we will not remain the same. We see your glory. We see your glory. We see your glory. Eye kopopote. Shatua pukapa. Rakavati kopopopota. Apapio begustota. Akabo besabo. Akabo besabo. Akabo besabo. Akabo besabo. Saibe beke vakamba bohato. Ibuwa bikoma. Adoka bebe kababai. My brothers and my sisters. They will see you too. They will see you too. Oh, 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 oh. Just pray, just pray, just pray. Papa Roba Koban Bakaba Babo Kababa, Yasaba Bekovon de Baba, Aska Baba Maria Babo de la Kaba, Roska Mote, Ateka de Baba, Ipapo Kamapanto, Ikapapo de Basai, Ikapabia Kapoba, Risto Bele, Epeno Mami Barosa Nato, Asete Pepa Mote, Saibi Breso Bolia, Aparoma Babo Kaba. We see you and we come after you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Ministers are trained not to confess. But you know, sometimes it's not a talk between saying yes to Satan or saying yes to the world or saying yes to the flesh or saying yes to self. On the other hand, saying yes to God. Sometimes it's a talk between transiting dimensions. That there's a place in God where you are in and you have found comfort there. And now God is saying what is upon you is a season of stretching. And what you are saying is, Lord, can I not just be here? Is there anybody like that? You know that your best life has been revealed. But you don't have the will to journey. 
when that season comes what we do is that we sing songs that help our soul to commit to him I know that you are already the talk amidst your friends that oh a saint has risen amongst us but when you sit alone maybe you are like me who still self confesses that this is not what Jesus died for <laughs> This is not what the cross can produce in a man for no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for those who love him. There is a better me. And that's what Jesus died for. Are you with me, my brother? If you want a better shoe, you will need to pay a price. I'm saying that the price for that better you has been paid. Jesus does not need to sweat, does not need to break a sweat to see you come into that design he has for you. You can't stop here. This is not Egypt, glory to God, but this is not Canaan. And the last time I checked in scriptures, a generation died here. This is Kadesh Barnea. It's the place where the believing become unbelieving. They believed enough to come out of Egypt, but they didn't believe to come into the promised land. And God said, they shall not enter my rest. This is about the rest. And as long as there is labor, it means we have not entered. We have not entered. In three, four minutes, can we cry out to Jesus? If you want more, I give you more. I yield. I yield. Oh my son. 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 Oh my Sako papiria rufe hatato asteto somi fenata tai fenite. This is not a guaranteed level. Men who fall from here can still go all the way down. Oh, can you bring me into that place that you are prepared? I yield in this day of invitations. Ogo mabokota. Sonda di satu kubatu afa abo peleme bote baru bena komba sambi bela kombe seya ayaki pento kombo hata avrate toda te sandu miti fisalo sandu miti fisetambe seya ta akite pembe rakaba takumpati ati akomba stota sambi beti fitulia laite suto tamiste firia Oh. You can stop the sounds. Topa hai. Tokas. Fadi an topa rofana turas. Santu fetu datade. Fedani ato faru datatabos. Pombo pebos. Santu peto vra pekes kopa hutada. It's not everybody's cry. But if you know, if you know that, that here it's still easy to go back. You can cry out to Jesus. Is there a dimension where I, where the journey is only upward? Is there a guaranteed level in you? Bring me there. Cut me meneke boka. Shadi beba kapo metambayata. Ranka babe kope kwakabayata. There is an escape out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But there is a region where the escape is not the escape. Men can still become a pillar of salt where I stand. I In Jesus name we are prayed. I have a body. I have a body. Listen, and it's, it's a very deep one. Only my wife, maybe first, definitely first the Holy Ghost and my wife, knows how big my burden is. 
we have found out that even though we have built or we are trying by the help of Jesus to build a system that in no way gives credence to the ways of the world, we are still not immune as a family. Are you with me? The things that happen everywhere still happen. In our midst, people still drop out. In our midst, vices still take place. Vices in the heart. Physical things. Things that should not be mentioned in the body of Christ still happen in the midst of very robust prayer. It means every man must labor that he does not fall. I found out that there's no system. There's no system. And I almost got heartbroken until Jesus showed me, look at Peter. I raised 12. One of them I had to intercede so that he does not end the story as a, a denier. The other one fulfilled scripture and he became a betrayer. So if I give you this number and there are a few dropouts, don't be too sad. Even in my own conclave, men dropped out. But it was to fulfill scriptures. And the last time I checked, there is no son of prediction here. There is none in our midst whose story must end that they dropped out. You want to plead with Jesus. You can be under godly doctrine and you still be wayward. You can be under godly doctrine and you will still do what a moralist will not do. You can be in the midst of intense prayer and it's only surface. Tongues capitalized but the workings of Christ are absent. Can you plead with Jesus? Let the story of my crash out of faith not be told. Preserve me from falling. Don't let me end my journey a reject. Don't let me labor this much and be cast away. I know that there are things you know how to do. Oh, let my life be a specimen of the one that is kept by you. Pray, 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 pray. The Bible says, let him that stand there take heed, lest he falls. This is a day of many falls. Oh, pray. This is not a guaranteed level. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts are bound. And this display, though some may dwell where these are bound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Now, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven stable and well of and love and lights abound. Lord, let my feet on higher ground. In a hand in over, he me babo mo kema rosa fine and a hatadi who safe in a higher. I run in lower and a me lower. All who bend the road and bend me wrong. And bend me wrong. Abu mo he kabe mo 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 ayada.
Father tonight we approach you as a spiritual family one that you have blessed one that you love one that you depend on it is a privilege to be the focus of your dealings and of your doings a house of counsel a house of revealed divine intents and purposes a ground of truth we plead with you that the things that defile will no longer bear rule in this house Amen. not just for us but for everyone who has ever encountered us physically online in our outreaches that there will be and the administration of the divine essence that rescues men from the brink of destruction Amen. on our account your name will not be dragged in the mud yes. on our account men will not gain say the capacity of the spirit to preserve from corruption help us and tonight we receive your help once again blessed be your matchless name in Jesus name we have prayed amen God bless you you may be seated we begin we began rather a series last week on the subject intercessions and I said to us that one of the reasons why we decided to pluralize that aspect of the enterprise of prayer is so that we can view from multiple perspectives, understanding that it is a faculty of prayer, but it is one with many different departments clearly demonstrated across scriptures. One of the things that we hammered on, in case you have not had the time to view last week, is what I called the eligibility requirements. And I'm going to hammer on that again today. How that God, across scriptures, revealed that his intentions for doing are built on the foundation of a becoming. Now, if you go for marital programs, what they say to us, which is from scriptures, is he that findeth a found what has found what a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. On this side of eternity, a woman does not become a wife until she is married. But the Bible says, he that findeth a wife. It means that on God's side, you can be a wife before you marry. So the young man who is finding, who is on a journey of inquiry with God, is not trying to look for a lady that he will make a wife. There is a spiritual office called wife. And a woman can operate inside it before she is found. Are you with me? It is actually the ones who have entered into that office that attract the answers of God when they say, I want to marry. Now, I'm not saying, because you need to be clear these days, I'm not saying that the reason why you've not gotten somebody to marry is that you have not become that. But I'm saying that the catchment within that catchment there are time differences there are seasonal differences so everybody will be found in their own day but what makes you eligible is that you have become a wife in god i'm still around relationships there is a measurement for wholeness and until wholeness is attained you are not one for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother 
and shall cleave to his wife and the two. It means he existed as what? One and one. It means your cries, Lord, I want to be married, will first bring you into a corridor where God labors to establish you in wholeness. You must be one before you are merged to become one. Everybody wants power to demonstrate as the sons of God. But there is a them that received him. There is a communication that must happen to them. There is an acknowledgement before the demonstration. There is a class of those who will function in the signs. These signs shall follow them that believe. And if you study Mark chapter 16, you find out the first thing that happens to that group is that they were first individuals. Then the gospel was preached to them. And then they all believed. So it was common communication. They were united in believing. And as proof of believing, the next thing was that they were baptized. And then they came out of the baptismal pool with the badge saved. And in case you are trying to now find out, how do this group express? You find out that in his name, they shall now. So the doings are predicated on the becoming. All things work together for good can be used on the street. But the Bible says to them that love the Lord. It's an identity in the spirit. And there are multi-workings of the spirit that produce a lover out of a natural man. They are also the called according to his purpose. It means they live in the consciousness of his purpose. A, a revelation, which is a communication from God, an appropriation unto believing, and then all things begin to align with them. It's not for everybody. So Paul didn't start by all things work together for good. How did he start that verse? And we know. It means it's not everybody who knows it. The word knowledge there is not just cognitive. Paul is testifying of an experience. He's saying, by intercourse, we have come to a conclusion. By experience, we have come to a conclusion that even adversity works together for our good. The question is, are you part of the we? Because it's not a universal reality. It's the reality of a set. So are you one of the elements of that set? At least you have done set theory before. Uh, are you one of... Now, what do you guys do? You are all first timers. Good. So, what do you do? Okay, but you are based in town here. Eloy, so how did you come to the house? You just came. Okay, been following you online. Now I said to come today. So, who brought who? You came alone. You came alone too. You came alone too. You now sat together. Okay. Okay. So what do you do? Animal production. Animal production. Okay. Did you finish from here? Ibadan. Okay. So you came in from Ibadan today. Oh, you are based here. Okay. You're working here. So here. Okay. What level now? 300. Okay. But you just came today. As what were you doing in 100 level now? Don't visit it. Don't just visit it. Stay, stay, okay? Good. So it's my own way to welcome you. God bless you. And then there's one, my sister in white too. Yeah, the first time. Okay. Abina, it's not word of knowledge. I saw you stand up now. Okay, so are you a student? What level? Going to 400. So you two have. Okay, not on a Sunday. God bless you. All right, please help me welcome them again. The others that came that I did not see, I'm sorry, but it's not, it's not prophecy I'm doing. It's just... These are the challenges. We were raised to do. We were not, we've not been raised for many years to become. And so we have sustained activity. So much that our activities no longer bring results 
but we are daily being encouraged to keep doing what we are doing with the hope that it works. If you have not learned how to cook, time may not mature your skills. Even prayer, they say that prayer is learned by praying. The disciples were not advertised to be prayerless. No. Maybe fasting was an issue, but prayer was not. But they must have peeped into Jesus' prayer life. The Bible did not advertise that they prayed together. Are you with me? Because it, when they queried him, he was praying. They must have been spectating. And then we made an end of prayer. He now, they now went to him and said, Oh God, this is the way they do. It would be like say, you do and pass us. Teach us to pray. And one word they did not add to their quest was how to. So they were not asking for a mental, for the communication of a mental process. If I say, teach me to pray, it means that you will communicate and the end will not be knowledge. The end will be practice. If you have taught me to pray, then I'll be praying. They revealed to us that beyond just praying endlessly, hmm, there is an educational system that is required to establish in the real Enterprise of prayer. In proximity to Jesus did not automatically confer prayer mastery. A Jesus that they could see. I hope you know that the Holy Spirit also has a prayer ministry. Are you with me? He also has a prayer ministry. It's established in scriptures. The Holy Spirit that you do not see, it will be difficult for you outside his educational system to learn because you can't see him. So at every point in spiritual engagement, there must be the cry that God should take you to class. And that's how I want to begin tonight. I found out that in intercession, if the burden is delivered by God, if a man engages it accurately, it is a hundred over a hundred possibility that it brings. Because God will only prompt your heart when he has an intention to move. Are you with me? Where's that, my friend? God stirred your heart to pray for your father. Did he intervene? Because it's the one that prompted your heart. Even the little contribution you made came with a guarantee that that thing will not fall. One of the things I want you to understand is that knowing God does not make God less of who he is. If any man boasts, let him boast in that he knoweth me and that he understandeth me. That you understand God. And what understanding does is that it confers on you the grace for predictability. If I understand Isaac, I know that Isaac will not. Have you taken popcorn and Gary before? Is it like a menu thing in your mind? If I understand you, I can even predict your choices in marriage. That if God tells Isaac to marry this kind of person, he will fight. So if he comes to that kind of person, we will pray. To help him to say, yes, Lord. God wants to be understood. Because the partnership with God requires some bit of predictability. So if God puts a burden in my heart, the educational system reveals that if I say yes to that burden and I join in with it, will come back with a 100% guarantee of a feedback that is in line with what God has revealed. 100%. Somebody say 100%. That's what it is. 
you find out that Jesus never prayed and his prayers were never answered. The only one time he would have recorded that out outcome was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it was because there was a clash of wills. And so that scriptures will never, will never be able to testify that he prayed a prayer that God did not answer. His manness, his humanity, quickly aligned with the divine order. Nevertheless, not my will, but I will be done. Because God will not have altered the protocol of redemption. What Jesus did not want to happen, God will still make it happen. So Jesus needed to align with it. Scripture records that Jesus had a 100% result in prayer. And that's the model for prayer. That if you say God saves, he saves. If you say God heals, he heals. If you say God resurrects, he resurrects. That's, that's what the Bible reveals. And that's the experience of the believer. Jesus came not just to show us the way of salvation. He was the pattern man. He is how man should live. He is what the results of man look like. Are you with me? Okay. So let's begin our journey in scripture. We want to first labor around knowledge and then we cannot journey into intercession. Luke chapter 8 is where we want to start from. And I wanted to read from verse 9 or verse 8 to 11, but let's go from verse 4 so that we have some bit of context. Verse 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake a parable. Please follow me carefully. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Another fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You find out that what kind of ears were Jesus, was Jesus speaking to here? What kind of ears? Anybody? Are there no Bible scholars here? Is this verse new to you? Is that line new to you? He that hath so what kind of ears is he appealing to here? Your natural ears. He that had ears. The company he was speaking to was an unregenerated company. Are you with me? So because they had not been quickened, their spiritual ear was not currently functioning. Are you with me? Meanwhile, Seven times in Revelations 2 and 3, the Bible invites unto hearing, he that hath an ear, that your spiritual ear is singular. Just like your spiritual eye is singular. Are you with me? So, you basically just needed to be in this service. That's what Jesus is saying. And just hear what I said. So, you will not be able to testify that you did not hear. Unfortunately, because the invitation was unto natural ears, there are functions that your natural ears are not designed to carry out. It was a parable that he said to them. They heard the parable. They listened intently. But these natural ears are not provisioned to be able to deliver spiritual understanding. That's how limited they are. Did you hear when pastor said, until Jesus wins inside you, he cannot win with your life. 
It means there's a battle that Jesus fights by his spirit with your soul until he wins. The degree to which he can use you to win for him is limited. Were you the one in that meeting? Ah, okay, I now recognize you. You know that night you were looking like Archbishop, so I didn't know that you were the one. Meanwhile, do you have the audio recording of that meeting? Okay, please help me. Get, where's Jerry? Please. He's your friend now. Uh -huh. I want to listen to it again. Thank you, sir. Okay, John was there too. Some people did not come. If I minister in Lagos and you don't have time to come, I'm just saying it's not compulsory. If I'm ministering in Obomosho, I think that it is good to be in the meeting. Because there are things I may be licensed to say in that meeting that I will never say here. It's not because I'm depriving you. It's because I will never be inspired to say it here. Think about telling. Think about telling. Especially if God says, follow. Follow. Papa is going to be preaching very soon. Or, yes, very soon. Um, that's in New Hampshire. That's Sunday morning service. The last service that he preached, that was yesterday's service in the conference. Me and him have discussed it this afternoon. Meanwhile, I'm not like Pastor Yomi. Me, I don't have a, I don't have the decoder, but I, I stay on YouTube, follow through. I've, did you see, did you watch yesterday's meeting? You saw how he joined it for a while. Now, peeped into prayer. I've worked that thing, worked that thing, worked that thing. I'll start using that. I've been doing it small, but I now, I didn't just hear what he was saying. I was learning. Okay. See how it translated. See how it translated. Did you see how I started this evening? Some, last week we labored on. Go and check how we started that sermon. Yesterday we stopped at. I listened even to. Do, where's Pelumi? Is he around? You remember that journey that went to a relay? We took one of Apostle Ramon's sermons and we're analyzing it. How does he start a sermon? How does he introduce prayer? How does he switch from prayer into something else? That's how to learn. I am not gifted more than two or three physical sightings with him every year. Congregating days together. It means I've only seen him in January. And I think I saw him in April. God willing, I'll see him in November. And that will be three times together this year. That's all. But I can learn following him. May God give us understanding. All right. Now, so that was the end of the general summer. And his disciples... Asked me, asked him rather, saying, what might this parable mean? One of the things you find out is that those who had hairs heard. But the question of the disciples, who must have been more attentive than the crowd, was that his speakings furnished only with knowledge and not with understanding. Only with knowledge. At that level, you can become a teacher. But your life will not produce any results by experience. Are you going for 72 hours? I was discussing with my brother, sit down, Prophet Abraham. I said, ah, this topic, the glory return. I have a compendium of sermons on the glory. But Jesus said, you must not look at what you have done before. Let me take you on a journey. So I arrived at a point on Tuesday, and I'm the one that's supposed to do the team interpretation on Wednesday. Even while I was here, I still prayed about that meeting. Say, God, I'm afraid. Of I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Because Jesus said, You people think you're coming together to be clothed? It's an altar I want to present to you. You are gathering unto death. So I now called my brother. I said, he said to me, I said to him, I said, the Lord said, the things that we have labored for, 
across the years. This is about what number? Maybe 12 or so. About 12. The Lord said, what if I return now in the glory and I put it on people who did not labor? What will you do? <gasps> John, so you stay in your room. You labor. Jesus now comes. He now looks for one of our friends who just bypassed her and now puts it on the person. You now see that this is what you prayed for, but you are not the one carrying it. Because when I studied Acts chapter 7, I found out that the man who labored for the glory was Stephen. Boop, 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 started a story from Abraham and journeyed in glory and saw the glory. But when the glory rested, he rested on the man who carried clothes for them to stone him. Because in the New Testament, oh, you have come again. The, Paul was the glowing one. Stephen labored unto death and opened a portal. And the light from that portal rested upon another man in Acts chapter 9. And that man became the shining one of the New Testament. How can I stay up in the night only for another man to run? He said, I brought you to die. So I explained to him. He went up in a loud voice. He now said, Turn on Bible for worship. Because I sense that there are things that we are laboring for, garments that we will not wear. So he said to me, He said, It means that the next assignment is to train the frontliners for the next part of the race. The work has changed. So peace, you mentor somebody, you mentor somebody, and in the day you want to lead a song, the choir director now comes and says, have you raised anybody? Yes. Let, let the person come. What will you feel? You will not know that you are alive until that thing happens. So he must bring you to an altar and slaughter you. For oh, your glory. I've been talking about I will do anything. You know the song is sweet. The song is sweet. The song is sweet. <laughs> Just to see you, to be old, you as my king. It is not true for most of us. It's not true. The disciples came to Jesus and asked him, what might this parable be? We know, we suspect that what you said, being a parable, was supposed to produce knowledge and not understanding. But we know, and this is where I'm going. Remember, the first eligibility criteria that we revealed for intercession is what? Becoming what? A loving disciple. Are you with me? There are things that God has reserved for lovers. One of them is spiritual understanding. And it is one of the greatest ingredients of an intercessor. Things are not always what they appear to be. So knowledge in intercession is not good enough. You will need to come into spiritual understanding. And many times when God gives off communication in the open... What he administers is knowledge. You can only go that far when you have knowledge until you begin to labor in understanding. You will not be able to move accurately in the corridors of intercession. The disciples knew that a disciple has more realities allocated to them so when the crowd had moved, they approached unto him and said, that thing that you said, yes, you said it. But what does he mean? Now bring us into understanding. What did Jesus say? That's what I want us to see. And then we'll run. And he said unto, and he said, unto you, who are, who, who are the you here? It means if you are in church tonight and you are just a church attendee, a church worker, a church member, a first timer, 
if you have not labored into existence as a disciple, you are not in the you. The church has become a house of knowledge. Do you know that even when it comes to doctrine, understanding will cure many doctrinal errors? Many people who trade doctrine in error are people who just view scriptures. They do, there's a, there's a, an hairstyle that ladies do. They call it pick and drop. I, be, I don't know how, how, how they do it. They shall pick something and drop something. I be, that's how those people use scriptures. They just pick and drop. Pick and drop. Cut one verse of scripture and use it. No context. I was somewhere sharing with someone this week and the person said, the person was trying to make a choice. A very robust choice. A choice of a life partner. And now said what has God told you? The person said, God, the Bible says that ye have not chosen me. I have chosen you and I have appointed you to bear fruit and the fruit to endure. What does it mean to you? It says it means that anything, anybody I choose, God will appoint unto fruit bearing. I said, okay. I said, but me, I've looked at marriage a little in scriptures. And I found out that the Lordship of Jesus, which was sparingly advertised in the Old Testament and dominantly advertised in the New Testament, does not suggest that we have a choice outside choosing him. If you have chosen Jesus, he makes your other choices and communicates them to you within the context of a will. Are you with me? So the life of a believer is simple. It's just to say yes. Those who walk with me like stories. All of them like stories. Did you come at 10 a.m.? Sir, you know when I was coming, and they know themselves. Sir, you know when I was coming, something happened on the road. I said, my questions are a yes or no answer. Abby, did you come at 10 o'clock? What's the answer? Yes. No. Okay. You did not do logic in secondary school. If yes... You will not give another layer, but we can't start if it's. We have not answered the question. The Holy Ghost says fast. He said, but you know, the response to the instruction fast is either yes, I will fast, or no, I cannot fast. If you now say, you know that the last time I fasted, I. No, it's shorter than that story. You will not err much if you talk less. Are you with me? Just go straight. I will fast. You start tomorrow. Yes, Lord. All of my doubts, my fears will be hidden in a second line. Yes, Lord. Help me. That's all. The limitations expressed in the last time can be accounted for in a request for help, but you must first show willingness. Simple. May God help us. Unto you, unto you, unto you. The you is not every man. The you is not everyone who comes to church. The you is a selected few. And unfortunately, the numbers are becoming fewer every day. Some have chosen not to be conscripted. Many others are dropping out. They are resigning. Unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And I want us to look. I said, like, give me that word, please. Mysteries. I think in Greek is the word mysterion. What does it mean in Greek? Because if God says that's been given to us to know, the word know there is not mental knowledge, it is experiential, intercourse. In other words, to be intimate with the mysteries of the kingdom. If we say that it's it has been allocated to you in intimacy with a person. What's the first question you're supposed to ask? Oh, look at Victor now. Have you entered a relationship now? Okay. Is there somebody there now? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think we had some communication. Are you in a relationship? Oh, you're in a relationship? 
Is there somebody? Okay. I want some. Is there somebody? Okay, thank you, Jerry. If I say to you that it has been allocated to, but you have plans to marry. It has been allocated to you to marry a person. What's the first question you ask me? When? That's, that's more important to you. You trust me that much? Are you in a relationship? What will you ask me? Who? You will need to discern that person. When means hey, your trust level is high. <laughs> it means you have gone past. It can be anybody. Just tell me when. May God answer you quickly. Yeah. Pastor Diola, Mysterium. Yes, sir. Mysterium is the word. It says hidden thing. So, what we have been, the word given to you is that it has been assigned. You have an allocation as a disciple to become intimate with a hidden thing. Is it a hidden thing? Yes, hidden thing. Secret with mystery. So, with something that is hidden, something that is secret. Okay, go on. Okay, it says, General, generally, mysteries, religious secrets, okay. confided only to the in, initiated and so, not to the ordinary mothers. So, these secrets are confided. Their communication is only to the initiated. You know, when we use the word initiate, thank you, sir. When we use the word initiate, many times it's darkness. You don't know that your subscription to the Lordship of Jesus is some kind of initiation. And Paul advertises the tokens of that initiation in very robust fashion. So he uses the word we so much in the New Testament. He also uses the two-letter word us in the New Testament. What he's trying to describe are the realities of we who have been initiated unto Christ. We are initiates. And because we are initiates, they are secrets that are only communicable and only have reality within our area. If you put your leg on the wall when you sleep this night, you will not go for a meeting. You will wake up with, with muscle ache. Meanwhile, they had not experienced it before, but they told me that it's a transport mode in the spirit. Are you with me? So, so you can walk into a room and you see somebody hanging his leg. And the person will wake up and talk to you. But I also know, because I've dealt with some of those cases, read a few things. If you shift some of those people from their natural position, that person will die after a few days. Because the person will never wake up. The soul can only re-enter their bodies, those initiates, in the position that it was when he left. And he had to kuni. It's not about this reality. When we wake up in the morning, some people are yawning. In our world, if you are like that, it's not likely that you watch Chinese film. It's that you prayed in the night. Eh? You went all night. But when we now say, how many of you are tired in the morning? Everybody raises their hand in class. How many of you went to all night? All of us raised all night. We must need to clear all night again. Abby? Because every initiate went to his own all night. Some people trek to their own. Some people stayed in their room, prayed their own. Some people traveled to their own. May God give you understanding. Amen. All of it is all night. All of us partake of the tokens of blood. But blood at different levels. Blood for different sources. Some people are still doing their own sacrifices to get their blood now. Our own was carried out. The blood is still fresh and has not lost its power. Are you with me? But we are initiates. We have secrets. They govern and regulate existence within our conclaves. Unto you, it is given to become intimate with the secrets of the kingdom, but to others in parables. 
they will hear it. But because there's no understanding, it cannot translate into experiences. And it's deliberate. That seeing, they might not see. Hearing, they might not understand. You see that, verse 11? Help me. Now, what did Jesus go ahead to do? Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So, disciples don't end their experiences with divine knowledge at knowledge level. They have an allocation for understanding. Maybe I should ask a question. So Jesus wakes you up and says something is wrong in your family. Something is wrong in your class. Something is wrong in your, in your nation. And I say, Jesus, that wrong thing, take it away. You are not interceding like a disciple. A disciple has capacity to go beyond something is wrong. He can know what is wrong. So if the Lord wants to publicly show us that he's concerned about us, he can come and say, ah, there are things I want to do in Nigeria. And that's public knowledge. What a disciple goes to ask him is, Lord, what things? Because we want to partner at elemental levels. In what place do you want to do that thing? I heard that people swimmed in Ondo this week also. I think that was a flood. Meanwhile, the meteorological um, people said, this state, this state, this state, this state, this state. Do you know that it's possible for somebody in Ondo to know when the rivers overflow their banks? I'm not saying they didn't know. I'm just trying to use that example to lock us into operations. The rivers overflow their banks this day, this time. And then we can build the barrier. Jude is a pastor, but he, still, he has not fully embraced his call. I'm saying it publicly. Uh, he, knows, he knows that he's a pastor. So when he fully embraces his call, we will now confirm him as his call. That story that he told you, many nights I wake up, I sense a movement in the spirit. My wife is sleeping, my children are sleeping. And instead of rushing to say, you will not die, you will not die, I probe I probe, I probe. What happens when you are probing is that God institutes, it's a legal term, it's called the moratorium. It's a state of action. The enemy cannot strike when I'm probing. I've engaged. So there's a way God stays the hand of the enemy when you are laboring to find out. When you are laboring to find out. The Holy Spirit is helping you on a journey. You will not touch it. Ah, this is what you want to do. Then I now rise up and say, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Immediately the utterances go forth from the earth. Now heaven is licensed to now act against the enemy. Meanwhile, what they did before was pause. Somebody is finding something. Are you with me? Can you whisper to your neighbor, you have an allocation of spiritual understanding. In case you think I'm wasting your time, we have been interceding. What God wants to do requires active partnership. And it's programmed to work. So there, is, there are educational tools or measures of spiritual education that we need to come into so that we become more proficient. You can know. I have a son in the army and I'm trusting God one of these days. I, I believe he's listening with his wife. He will be here to share some of his experiences. My son will call me when he was Still in Madiguri. And I remember that day I went for a meeting in Ibadan. Myself and Prophet Abraham were in the meeting. Um, Pastor John's meeting. He was with me for two days and he was already, he had been posted to Madiguri about two, three years ago. So I was the one that drove him to Ojo, where he took a bus to Lagos and then traveled down. I went to resume. Immediately I dropped him and I was driving back home. I was crying. Say, Jesus, can you show me mercy? That this boy will not die. Oh, he had many near-death experiences. 
It was in the middle of that. They call it the, the theater of something. You know I mean? I mean, that's what they call the open field. So, after a while, a horn rose in the spirit. And it, was, it began to pray to the gift of the word of knowledge. So that my son can go to his commander and say, Thursday, 11 a.m. From that place, BH, that's the code. May God give you understanding. We attack us. If we ambush there, we wipe them out. 11 o'clock, they lay ambush. 11 o'clock, those guys come. A gift. One day I now said, don't use it again. Somebody can be, <laughs> before somebody says, ah, there's an Elisha. Uh, let's go and take him out. I hope that with your ability to, to know, you can also make people blind. <laughs> because if, if you cannot occasion blindness in the day that they come after you, they can take you out. I hope you know that the gift that Elisha used to hear is not the gift he used to make blind. There are gifts that a man uses that exposes his insufficiency. That's why we must labor in partnership. Because most times, what God puts in the man who is laboring with you is something that will complement you. Where's my daughter? Where's Christiana? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I called you during the week. It was not to lead prayer or anything. I needed to navigate into something. But the person who was involved in that matter is connected to me. So I, I confess to her. Because of my affection for this person, it's clouding my reception. And you must know that. Doctors do operate their children. Are you with me? Sometimes when I need to find out things about my for my wife, I will call my friends. So, check this thing. Because your emotions will betray you. My friend, my, I call him my friend. He's my friend and brother, Prophet Abraham. Sometimes we meet people and I say, are you sure about this person? He say, ah, oh, he's my friend, he's my friend. I say, no, this person is not your friend. Say, apostle, apostle, I say, he's not your friend. I would say, you have loved this person so much. And affection does discernment. Some of you will connect any. Me, I will not relate to this person. Say, but it's our, I will not relate to this person. After a while, the person shows up in true colors. Say, most of you, you know more than me. But once you bring affection in, it does your discernment. So I called her. I said, find out. Okay, sir. I respond by midnight. And by midnight, the answer came. When I delivered the answer, there were already other witnesses on ground who came up with that same answer. Meanwhile, for me, it was a knife-edge situation. Either here or here. There's goodness in both. What we want to find out is what is best in God. But I had to second it out. So somebody is saying, ah, I say, Pastor, why are you too strong? God will help you. I mean, I don't even want that reputation. So that you can touch what I really want us to touch, I want us to look at this account in four verses in another book of the Bible. I've not even gone far. I'm still on my first line. Matthew 13 from verse 10 to 13. Pay attention to the 12th verse. That's where my body is. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou Unto who? Them in parables. So when Jesus sits and is speaking in parables, the people and his disciples are hearing, but his disciples know that he has not spoken to them. Have you gone out before and two of you are speaking and somebody comes? You now say, eh, you know, so that person now took the phone. 
When you now leave the third person, see, that person here, Sholani. Sholani. Because the third person is not initiated, so you have not really spoken to us when you do it in the public. So, when a disciple is more public in his relationship with Jesus than secret, you cheat yourself because you were designed to maximize counsel alone with Jesus. Anything that steals your private time with Jesus makes you live knowledge based below what was allocated to you. There is more to know, but it is in secret. That's why we say that the life of an intercessor is in secret. There are things we can say in the open, but there are things that you also want to say in the open. If you have a living relationship with Jesus, as it wants to come out of your mouth, you will deploy what we call exit tongues. You know what exit tongues are? They are tongues that you use, to, you use them to douse cancer. And the Lord said to me, oh my, that's the end of what he said to you. Let them go and interpret it. Some years ago, God's prophet, the prophet of JJ was in the meeting. You have seen the video, but you don't know the counsel. So he began to speak, he began to speak, he began to speak to a certain person. And then, after I had spoken about six, seven lines, he went into tongues for long. And then my brother called me, Prophet Abraham, he interprets tongues well. <laughs> he said the rest of that thing that he said, in Katasoni, Katasoni, Katasoni. We thought he was praying. No, he continued the statement in the spirit. Because unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. <laughs> ah! I want to be where you are. I'd rather be where you are. I want to be where you are. And I'd rather be where you are. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know, become intimate with the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. The door of understanding is short to them. No access. Next verse and pay attention. For what does for mean when you study scriptures? It's an attempt to now explain what was said. That what was said is built on a foundation. He said, For whosoever hath to him shall be given. Come, Mara. Come up here. Let's assume that is this handkerchief that wants to be given. He means if you see this man handkerchief with Mawa, it's because Mawa has. That's why he was given. In other words, it's like the handkerchief is given because he already has an handkerchief. How do you give to the person who has? And the Bible says, what shall he have more? Abundance. But whosoever has not. So if he comes, he has an intention to receive. But because he does not have from him, shall be taken away even that he hath. When Jesus begins to speak, that verse is saying, everybody, by your reality as man, has the privilege to come into the counsels of God. But there is what they check. There must be the seed of further communication in you. There is something that registers you as one of us. When you have it, then you can have what we have. But if you don't have, 
your allocation, which is supposed to be yours because you have, will also be withdrawn from you. So if there are 10 young men that come up here and want to ask God for something, the first thing God will check is if they have. He has 10 things. But if they don't have the basic requirement, what was their allocation? With their names on it will not be given to them because they don't have the basic requirements. Meanwhile, the possession of a basic requirement comes advertises that you are ready to receive more. That's why even the potency of intercession is given to those who have. There are people who intercede but they don't have. So that their allocated potency is no longer given to them. Everybody who comes to God has a wisdom allocation. But what they first check inside you is the seed of wisdom. And that has to do with your basic redemptive status. Ah, this one is not a son. Even though there's an allocation. So what they will do is that they will take it and give it to a son that has. It may be a good time to stop and ask two questions. I hope that everybody in church tonight is saved. Because we can be coming to church so much that we forget that we are not saved. Just like you can be attending class and forget that you are not yet a student. I shared it when we were in 4D. My other brother was finished from OAU. So he was in our hall, block 4. There are these guys in, I don't know if they still do it in Ife. There are these guys who are not students, never matriculated in OAU, who have allocated hostel. Oh, they are still there. <laughs> I mean they've never been students why even contested for SUG post when I was doing my damn lesson never a student I mean never a student and the guy had very heavy followership on his screening <laughs> they now found out that the guy had been in school for like 5 years he lived in one of those corner special corner rooms he came into school as a business person after a while, he now entered, entered the porters and now was able. That his room was his room for four years. I've forgotten his name. But all of us knew him. He knows everybody. Once he's coming, they hail him, they hail him. Until he now wanted to do something important. They now found out that. What level are you? The guy has been an applicant for five years, but a resident applicant. I used to follow my other brother for classes that time, you know, was in English, I was preparing for my jam, and so sometimes I don't feel like staying in the hostel, so I just go to class and sit with him. And when you do lectures in amphitheater, they don't mark, they don't say, are you a student? Come in. Are you a student? Come in. Everybody just sits down. So, you don't know if I'm not a student. I even joined a fellowship. I joined Bible study department, BSFOAU. I joined People liked me. At least I've been teaching scriptures much more that time. Me, I joined the hope. But the hope never materialized. I even had friends. Both brothers have very nice sisters. Ah, this guy, this guy. When you enter, when you enter. But I never enter. You can be in church, but not in Christ. Are you saved? This year I found out that you can be prayerful and not saved. Just like you can be prayerful and not spiritual. Because a spiritual person is going to be prayerful. Are you with me? But you can be prayerful and not spiritual. It means that the feedback of your prayer is not what is governing your life. So you can pray and God says, don't go. Which is a counsel of the spirit, but you still go. It means you are not spiritual. Because your life is not bearing witness to spirit government, even though you are prayerful. You can live a fasted life. You don't know what they used to call it. You not only fast food, you fast TV, you fast media. You have given away your Android or iOS powered phone. Now you have collected a torchlight phone. And without your fast, Jesus is still not Lord of your life. Because if you have not called him Lord, he's not your Lord. 
it has to be a, 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 a cognitive entrance. Oh, I've been here for long and they will back a way to when it comes to entering the kingdom of God, that you stay close to the kingdom. Um, what's the Acts chapter 10 is who? Cornelius. Cornelius had kingdom-like expressions. And so Jesus had to give him a proper entrance by sending one of the princes of the apostles to him, Peter. Send for Peter. And Jesus gave him the address. Are you with me? Because Proximity doesn't open the gates of the kingdom. And until you are in, the things of the kingdom cannot be your things. You wish for them, you pray for them, but they will never happen. When you come into the kingdom, you now need to choose if you'll be a disciple or not. Because not everybody in the kingdom is a disciple. The life of a disciple is one that is lived under studying his master with a future in view. The future in view is to step accurately into the shape of his master. That's the end of a disciple. It's not, it's not following so that he can be the world's richest man. It's not following so that he can be the most popular pastor. Those are not the motivations of a disciple. It's that my Lord and I will be one in existence and in expression. So, the second question would be, now that you are saved, are you on the path to becoming like your Lord and expressing like him? If that thing is not true, it means you'll be saved Unto hearing, but you'll be cut off from understanding. So when two of us pray, we'll pray at different levels. You pray still like an outsider because you have not embraced his yoke. Jesus' definition of discipleship is take my yoke upon you and learn of me. There must be an active educational experience in the life of a disciple. His testimonies to following Jesus are not sufficient in Jesus. Did this thing for me. Did this thing for me. You don't have to be saved to experience miracles. The Bible says, the Lord is rich unto all them that call upon me. If a non-believer calls Jesus, you know in Nigeria, home video, when a car is almost accidented, how does it go? It never goes straight. The driver must first drive like this and this. Woo, 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 and then he will now enter the bush and park because they will have warned him. Wavi baggy, bokobolo baggy, koravi, kontoba dent, obo. So he will quietly park the car, then rest his head on it and say that he has died. Hmm. So, take my yoke, learn. I've seen non believers in accident, near accident stations shout Jesus and he shows up because he's rich unto all them that call upon him. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is an allocation of salvation that has no eternal relevance. That is a now allocation of salvation. And you can source it even when you have not subscribed to the Lordship of Jesus. Just look by me and it will take you. Are you a disciple? School is partially on break now. And I think that we should devote our lives to finding that path. The Bible is not a book of promises. It's a kingdom manual. It means if you sit with it like a student, you can unravel your path. Because until, you are, until it becomes a map for existence, it's Joshua called it the book of the law as echoed by God. Are you with me? It means it's a manual. That is a kingdom manual. It's not a book of promises, even though there are promises there. There's prosperity in the Bible, but it's not a book of prosperity. Are you with me? There's influence in the Bible, but it's not a book of influence. It means it has the capacity to produce those things, but it is not essentially about those things. Those things are supposed to be byproducts of following a path. 
like I was saying in my office this afternoon, I said, was it my office or at home? Okay, it was my daughter. My spiritual father would tell me, don't be under pressure what you have or what you don't have. On this part, there is comfort. Keep following Jesus. Keep following Jesus. A week ago, he said to me, he said, don't be afraid to be a lone voice. The world is about shining, but you are John. You are John. You are John. That's what it was screaming into my spirit. You are John. You are not just a shining light. Ultimately, if we stay on this path, people will celebrate us. Are you with me? You are a burning and a shining light. Many have embraced shining and they have lost touch with the ability to burn. Convicting power is gone, but they are shining. You know when a non-believer says, Ah, Victor. Says, Pastor Victor is my special pastor. I love his sermons. And that person is not saved. It's a sad thing. It means that you're a shiny light. But you have lost your burning ability. Because the last time Peter preached, the people came and for them by altar call and says, Men and brethren, what shall we do? When you see pastors or Christians write on secular platforms and men who subscribe to another kingdom say, oh, inspire me, inspire me. Inspire you unto what? It's a credit to that person because you are a shining light. You trailblaze a path but you have lost your body. One of the first post-resurrection impacts of the communications of Jesus was captured within the words, did our hearts not burn when he speak to us? <laughs> ah, did our hearts not burn? Give me all in my life. Keep me burning. Not just shine. Give me all in my life. I pray. Give me all in my life and keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Lord, give me all in my life. Keep me burning. Even when you sing, sit down. Hearts must burn. Heart must burn. Oh, I love your song. I love your song. There are non Christians who have Christian songs on their phones. And the only testimony is, ah, read the money at Dagon. My wife, if she's listening, okay, she's in another meeting. Uh, my wife used to have a cousin. A cousin that was very special to me because that cousin accommodated me. Even when my wife was dragging, I ah, said, This brother is not a bad person. So she used to sing Christian songs. I think that time she used to like um, there's this big dark musician in the US. I forgot that name. But she's big, she's dark. I mean, big, that's big body, tall. I've forgotten her name. But she used to sing her songs. Eh? Eh? I can't hear you. Ah. Pastor Dela is used to, to secret talking. Eh? No, 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 not down, not down, not down. If he even tells me, it's just between us two because we are initiates too, so. You will not hear. It's not me that will mention it on media. But she used to sing the song. But the burden I used to have is. Even if a believer sings. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. May God give you understanding. You know that people sing like that. Uh -huh. That is coming. It's supposed to provoke something. Because it burns. Yeah, we merchandise conviction. If you find out that you are still shining, you are no longer born. Use this break to find your intensity. Don't waste it. 
Don't waste it. I have it in mind. I've shared with my wife. I think I shared with one other person. I don't know. Somebody here. That by the time school is okay, maybe with um, um, where's Joseph? Is around? Yes. Joseph spends a lot of time with me. So he hears, he knows many things that I've not even told Uriomi. Because Uriomi is now one with his wife. He doesn't come to my house again. Uh-huh. Even if I stop coming to see her baby in my house. Because my son calls Ife my auntie. I don't know what Ife has done to him, but that's what he says. See, I say your auntie is coming. See, my auntie, that's his auntie. <laughs> so, they are still on honeymoon. So, I tell Joseph quite a lot of things, and I'm saying, I feel that when school resumes, what we will resume with, I'm still trying to probe if the feeling is of God, is have a prayer conference, two days. Where we just bring ourselves before God in the consciousness of the hour, and that's very early in November, and just drive. I saw a young lady in Kano. I was ministering. And from the beginning when we started the prayer, she basically did not end until we finished. So when they now brought her out during the impartation, she's been like that before. I said the problem is she has not used her vows for long. So she, she needs a lot of she needs a long journey before she arrives. So the Holy Spirit was intentional throughout the service. The thing we come, she will ah, 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 again and then start rolling in tongues. Say, leave her, leave her, leave her. And I told her if you leave her for long, her tongues will no longer be prayer tongues, she'll prophesy and interpret her tongues. She's been a prophet, but unused channels. So leave her. Leave her. If that one prophesies the money, leave her, leave her. Let her clear the channel. Many of us, we have been doing short, 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 short prayer. The thing almost opens, it shuts down. It almost opens, it shuts down. You've been praying about a matter. You say you can't hear God. God is speaking. It's you that you are deaf. You know what they call an earbud? No, sorry. An ear. It's earbud now. Not pod, bud. Shebi, that has a, like a straw that has a um, cotton wool on it. And it's like a straw now. Is it not plastic and abima? Shebi, earbud, none. Uh-huh. Do you know why they created the earbud? Because they know that this your hearing, um, there's a word I want to use. I can't find it. This, your, this, this cavity here that is supposed to give admittance to sounds, why you use it to hear a lot and it interacts with dust and everything, it becomes clouded. Where's Jide? When new students come into Goma, what are the medical, when they do medical exam and all of that, you know that they always clean everybody's ear. <laughs> In the hospital, is one of the protocols that students are submitted to before they are gifted admission. They will clean their ears in case they say one plus one. And it says, hmm? uh-huh. because, by because of, you see, God is not silent on your matter. Maybe you have not heard. And it's part of your preparations as an intercessor. A deaf intercessor is not an advantage. It's better it's deaf naturally and you can hear in the spirit. So they need to clean your ears. Sometimes it's the heat of prayer that melts earwax. Stay long. Lord, I have an allocation in hearing. I am a disciple. Let this my, this my hearing ear be activated. Some of you, your heart is enlarged in understanding. But the things God says to you now land as parables. Lord, I am not part of them. I am in the house. Can you unlock my heart unto understanding? And then you stay long. You go back and study your scriptures. You come back again. You stay long. The end of that prayer is not time. The end of that prayer is that now understanding has been furnished. Some of you are still bearing the tokens of the Lord, like I will share briefly before my time is up. But 
you have broken this the spiritual rule you bear his tokens but your hands are still dipped into iniquity huh? i mean you pray but it's, you have not become a friend of those who say it's not by prayer you know why people say it's not by prayer i was taking a walk yesterday evening the lord said those who say it's not by prayer arrived at that point because the church lost her puritan existence our nation does not know what the prayer of a righteous man looks like because my bible says that the effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man does what availed much he make a power available that's what the bible said so when unrighteous men pray and there are no answers prayer becomes something that men can gain say there is a call unto puritan existence before we embrace intercession so you can use this break to approach unto jesus find a corner a silent corner in the school isolated by yourself so that you can scream and say things to jesus you know that i'm a i'm a prayerful man but this thing this thing this thing these things that your brothers must not hear jacob knew that he had an allocation Esau has sold his right to me, but I cannot see the tokens of the blessedness. How can I lose porridge and then not see the birthright materialize? Okay, Sylvester, I will say, speaking Yoruba. I mean, Esau has collected the pot of porridge. He has eaten it. Esau is looking for his birthright now. Jacob has no proof that the birthright was delivered. Jacob knew. At least Esau can say, I don't have birthright, but I had porridge. Jacob lost porridge, but has no tokens. Because the token of the birthright in that family is the possession of the blessing. My name is Jacob. My name is Jacob. What he was saying to the angel is that I know there is a way I am introduced in heaven that even though the birthright is now my right, I cannot possess it because I am a supplanter. The way the carrier of that birthright is introduced in heaven is that he is a prince of God. I am Israel. If you don't bless me, I will not let you go. The angel tested his resolve. So some of you will pray. You now have some pain somewhere. And the pain will now communicate to you. So, well, well, go home. Go home. It's at that point that true prayer begins. When the body is joined. My soul tasks for thee. My flesh longs for thee. Until your flesh begins to long for him. You have not crossed so that's what we should tell ourselves until your body is joined in your prayer you know why you are still freestyling when you stay long then you now feel pain somewhere Ah! if you go beyond that pain the pain dies now your body has been recruited you can join until, until I see the sign that I am blessed change my name Change my name. I am an intercessor, but I am not a righteous man. I came with the righteousness of Jesus, but I know that experientially I am not righteous because the Bible said, Be not deceived. He that doeth good is righteous. Lord, I'm not a doer of good. Change my name. Change my name. Oh, change my name. Change my name. Change my name. When darkness sees me, they are not afraid because there's a name I bear in secret. Change my name. Change my name. In error was I named, but my life is now one lived in error. They called me Jacob because I held the heel of my brother. I came like the firstborn, then retreated, and then came like a secondborn. Even in birth, I was deceiving. Change my name. Until the shift happens, what is upon your lips will not be strong. Oh, I know somebody will come and say, oh no. Jesus has died for you. He has done this. There was a reason why Jesus died. It's not for your life to remain the same. 
when, when you buy tomato from the market, you don't cook it that way. What do you do to it? You wash it. You wash it so that it can be edible. You pay the price for it already. There is a reason why Jesus sits on the man that he has saved. It's so that that man can meet up with the eligibility requirements. What I'm trying to press into is that there is what a priest looks like. Because intercession is pure priestly prayer labels. A priest doesn't dress like other men. And when you look at scripture, stay with me. The garment of a priest is supposed to advertise the expressed characteristic traits. So when you see in the New Testament, the Bible says that you should put off the old man and put on the new man. It's talking about expressed character. Don't live like you used to live. Live anew. Are you with me? So when they say the garments of the priest must be white, what it means is that the priest expresses a life that is beyond blame. But you found out that there's blame. It means your priesthood will be disturbed. Help me. Can we pray for five minutes? Help me. Just play very low because I, I want people to rise on the strength of the burdens that they perceive. You know yourself. See my life and send me help. See my life and send me help. See the things of the enemy that still find expression in me and send me help. The life of a priest is one beyond blemish. He tries foundationally on the imputed righteousness of Jesus. Secondly, he thrives by the strength of a soul that has been imparted by knowledge with righteousness. And a body that operates every day in righteousness. Oh, I will not subvert you, Jesus. I will not subvert you, Jesus. When the prince of this world cometh, there will be nothing of his in my soul. There will be nothing of his in my body. Deliver my mind from depravity. Affect my desires. Let my cravings be altered. Oh yeah, he's super local to be altered. Shomepa ranko pa bobelata sai pipeturia rive kampapo katuke samebo ekopa peke pa habatosa samburi kabariate. Can you send me help from your holy place? Break, break the hub of depravity in my members. Pabile kuri asemai. Some in Preston, some Bapoba on Bobresa, Sepe Pilam Bekeboba, some Bapoka Biampata, Ate Pepe Copa Bombi Cabai, Wupe Pala, Wupe Pecampabos, Sami Leve Cabai, Rumpe Pabo, Acapomba Sami, La Pepe Racaba Biapa, I Papier, Sambia Bacomba. Hey! 
akafe mokambeli kamba bo akababa kibante agabambele gabi ambarus kaba akabi pereste teba oh i surrender to your help i surrender to your help aprembe kamba ba kavale mante ba yote sabombarusta aya fia aya fia this priest has come to be consecrated this priest has come to be consecrated let the things that disqualify drop off I come Let your head not be lacking in oil and your garments unstained. Your garments unstained. Your garments unstained. Can you cry out tonight? Let my garments be unstained. Oh, Same Ratavi Kamba Bombe Kabade Etetim Bedite Libre Ketebe Yatata. Things in the secret, things in the open. Tonight, Lord, let this priest emerge with unstained garments. Vile kumpa peke anata. Vile kapati kumbe ratorias. Satan, you lose tonight. You lose tonight. Oh, fame bagima moka bebe gaba baraka ba moko monata. Sadu kopela kipina haya. Eka leve kapa baba kapa baba rata hada abato menote tatswata sabeti teveha sobara vahata shanti pelatia shite vehiata. There is a cry in my spirit. It is for a release. It is for a release. Let the snare be broken. Cause me to escape, but I may come into the fullness of my ordination as an intercessor. One a problem is. I Let me come to the waters where the things that defile are overcome. The waters are in the house tonight. But Neman must dip himself. You must dip yourself. Wash me. Oh, Lua. Mogbo Mure. Timbe mi wadore. Don't 
uti to jesu fa bara wenu mo awe o ninu eje o taguto iwo ha me kele o be o fere awe o ninu eje o taguto awe o there is blood in the chair. Oh, the good ni we were any tea I come again he won this is for yes I think well let's share well every bala oh and it I come again for A story from the Lord. Hallelujah. This message is to you. I bring. It's written. It's recorded in His words. Hallelujah. It's only that you look and live. Listen, our life in the spirit is, is, is dimensioned into the shape of Solomon's temple. That's the shape also of the tabernacle of Moses. You can be saved and live in, and live in the outer court. You will still be prayerful, but you have no rights to intercede. No rights. If you intercede, you can be struck because your prayer is built around petition. 
your life is not too different from the man who is not saved so the only tool of prayer that you have is the brazen altar and the only sacrifice that happens on that altar is the sacrifice of sin it means your only prayer prescription is give me then sin forgive me I will not do it again only to come back to say forgive me you have no place in intercession if you journey a little bit higher you come into the courts of the priests and you find out that they are washing bowls and their lights to illuminate so that the priest can see himself there is a table of shoe bread which is also a type of the word of God that nourishes it means in that second place the kind of prayer they pray there is supplication all of those tools are tools of alignment behold me I want to serve your will can you align me can you align me intercession happens in the holy of holies you must have gone past the altar of incense we come in the strength of worship giving credence to him that hangs on the cross but according to what was written in scriptures every man who goes in has a rope on him because if you miss your steps around the brazen altar you'll be alive if you miss your steps around the table of the shoe bread death does not come when the Shekinah comes in the place of intercession death becomes possible many are intercessors are living dead men because they entered into a realm not fulfilling the requirements there is a mercy that God has shown us in intercession in Nigeria is that even though captured in the reality of intercession is long prayer you find out that the Lord has brought us back into petition so many of those long prayers are still give me they want to pray long but let's keep them in the outer court we're not even supplicating they said we say alignment too much they say it's not in scriptures but lives are still not straight it means we have not joined far I was talking with one of my big mommies yesterday mommy said two true prophets are scars a prophet is not obsessed with being heard the counsels that power the life of a prophet are many times things too difficult to say. God needs to threaten like he did to Jeremiah. If you are afraid of the people, I will confound you before them. Because the prophet many times is sent to a people, but he speaks against the people that he sent to. That's what we saw in scriptures. There are many that intercede but many do not wear the garments of an intercessor and so the reality of intercession is scarce he wants us to come in but there's what you wear the one who goes into the holies of holies dresses by prescription and I'm not just talking of physical dressing because physical dressing is a basic requirement morality solves the issues of physical dressing are you with me it solves that it solves that I was washing, walking past a clothes rack recently, a lady's clothes rack, and I saw that they had about eight mannequins outside. And if you wear everything on those mannequins, your belly button will be out. It's good. There's a way priests dress, even in the physical. Are you with me? Are you with me? A policeman dresses somehow to make us know he's a policeman. You can slap him. You now say, I'm police. What will you do? Say, I did not know. You didn't dress like it. But I promised I will never build a sermon. Except Jesus bullies me. And he has never done that. To teach about how to dress. If the spirit inside you cannot judge how to physically look. And then you are wrong. You are wrong. Dressing is one of the most basic expressions of culture. Basic. Are you with me? If I came here wearing striped white and black with something on my neck, where will you say I'm from? What state? Most likely Benway State. I've been. Uh, if I appeared on the road with 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 red cap and uh, uh, Isiagu, you know what they call Isiagu? That's how he stand clothes that has lion on it. Uh, where will you say I'm from? Or your? 
It's basic. I mean, I don't speak Igbo, but I have Isaiah Gu in my cupboard. Maybe I'll wear one on Tuesday. And if you look at me and say, Gini Kagi, I will say, I don't know. Because clothing is basic. It doesn't show that you are educated. But it's what we wear in the spirit. It's a garment of blamelessness. Jesus didn't just die and make me pure. He died so that I can sustain purity. And I will fight to bring to the Lamb the reward of his suffering. What they told us in intercession was that the first territory to conquer is the nations. They didn't tell us that we are a territory also in the spirit. And many men who intercede are, or are right now on conquered territory. They are only actively thinking territory when we gather to pray. They defile the same territories that they are sent to take for Jesus. I will not subvert you. I will not subvert you. Many of us have walked into the Holy of Holies and we have been struck dead, dragged and given another opportunity. But the song says you can live. You can live. You can live. You can live. One of our new ministry sons, many of you don't know him. I met him in Lagos when I went for convergence. Came with terrible stories of how the family had scattered. And I was tired. I was somewhat sick. I was on my way to the car. So he, daddy prayed. So we prayed. And a few weeks later, he now called me. What they sell, like pipes and all of those things. Um, what do they call them? Eh? Yeah, building materials, but all those, um, I think they, they call them sanitary wares. And all of, I don't know. There's a name they call all those things that they use, WCs and all of them. And some, some people said, uh, people are struggling to eat. You think they are buying all these things. So we prayed. And Jesus came. So he called me one morning, Daddy, please send me your account number. I said, what happened? He said, Jesus has blessed us. I didn't mind him. If you tell me that thing first time, I'll not answer you. That's not why I pray. So again, Daddy, you do not, I said, I said, Jesus, thank you. Glory to God. He said, but I said, you should, said, I said, don't worry. Oh, but I made a vow to Jesus. If you answer that, we give you something. I said, you are relieved from your vow. But sir, okay, this is my account number. When he sent me the money, I said, ha, ha. The air was long. <laughs> Within the short time, he said, yes. He said, boom, the business just opened. And then, we will not be able to pay for another house to move into and all of that. When did I go to convergence? August, have So this week, he said, ah, my dad is dying. He can't move his body. Because it was a big family attack. He can't speak. If they put food in his mouth, he, he, he throws it out. And me, I was trying to sleep that night. So I now picked my phone and typed. I said, you, he lives. Tell me what happens in four hours. In four hours, the report was that every meal he put in his mouth stayed in his stomach. His body is moving. Eh? He can talk. He can talk. So yesterday, the dad did video call to say, ah, pastor, thank you, thank you. He will go home safely. With filthy garments, we can't do too much. There are relations that will die. There are cities that will be plunged into darkness. Let me, I'm trying to build the, the weight on the life of a priest. You be careful. God can save. But many times, when I come on Tuesday, I will teach you that intercession starts with instigation. That's the only thing you can do in intercession. In intercession, we don't gain power to change things. We can only report. That, that's your take in intercession. Lord, do this. You remember that um, in, in Luke chapter 8, that woman needed help. Only the judge could get it done. Her job would be to go to the judge and disturb the judge. If she had power, she would have done it herself. God wants to help that family. But the family is far away from him. What he will do is to put the burden of his help in you. He will now lay your life down so that he can walk over you into that family. That's intercession, standing in the gap. 
Are you the one doing it for the family? No. Your life becomes a path that God can travel through to get into a city, to get into a family. It means if God does not find comfort in your life, those people are doomed. Sometimes you are not a bridge. In intercession, you are a wall. Satan wants to afflict and God is looking for a man to stand and say no. But if Satan finds a soft spot inside you and the soft spot of Satan are his things that are in a man. So, oh, they're still lost in his heart. He will journey through that lust and afflict those that are close to him. That's why the life of a priest must be lived with every sense of duty. Your errors will be few if you cry out to him. Are you with me? He's not calling us to intercession because we have been prayerless. It's that our current shape with which we have entered prayer cannot intercede. Jesus said, for thy sakes I have sanctified myself. It means my purity is a currency on your behalf. David, can you use your life as a currency in the spirit to say, Jesus, I know there's something wrong with my constituency. But I will be telling me, Lord, what day? See how you have helped me. Can you, because of me, come? Do you have that position of favor? And the enemy will not come to say, you, you cannot come the book of Job shows that the life of everyone who stands in the gap is up for contest. I hope you know that Job was an intercessor. Because every time his children parted, the Bible did not show us that his children had prayer lives or sacrificial existence. Job always went and his own intercession was, was, um, uh, was preventive. What, do you, what word do you use in medicine when you use anti-malaria before you are sick. What do you call it? It was prof Are you in medicine? Okay, nothing. Okay, so that's why I'm flexing. He's good. He's good. He's good. I shall love school. Shake my hand, Jare. I'm healing you. That's what I'm doing. You know, Pastor Dela does not know it. You know it. He doesn't know it. He only knows potters and none of those things. Prophylactic. That's what his intercession was. Maybe they have sinned so that God will not strike them. He will now offer a prophylactic sacrifice. That's a stream of intercession. So God says, I'm coming to the territory. And then prayer arises. Because his coming is not always good. Lord, in case we have done, the territory has done something wrong. Have mercy upon us. There's also redemptive intercession. Lord, we know that we have sinned. That's Daniel chapter 9. We know that we have sinned, but there's an allocation of mercy inside you. Are you with me? So that's why we said intercessions, many kinds. But can your existence become a tool in that prophylactic thing? Because of me. Don't let them suffer. Because of me. Come to. Jesus wants to make you a priest after his order. One that God can use as a tool to bring redemption to people. To close, give me Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 19. Spend my life. Spend my life. And reap the nations for you. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling to the world, the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us what? The word of reconciliation. That's bridge building. God had an intention. It was to, through Christ, 
bring the world back into fellowship with himself. And what he did was to communicate to us or commit to us the word of reconciliation. Let's go to verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are the face of Christ in that enterprise. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. It means there's an assignment that Jesus is doing, but we are called to do it on behalf of the Christ. Be reconciled to God. One of the foundational qualifications to labor as a minister of reconciliation is that you they are reconciled. You can't bring people into a house where you are not welcome. Abi, you can't. I close with a story. I went on a retreat December 2016. My other star used to work as a nurse in total at that time. So I follow her when they go for their offshore Christmas vacation, about three, four days. And I spent that year praying a lot. I was trusting God for a spiritual oversight. Because I knew that that stage had come in my walk with Jesus. The walk had come into a mode that needed a high dimension of counsel, a high dimension of covering. And some of you know where I had planned to travel in January. It was in the midst of that labor on the 28th of December as we were coming out. The Lord said, on oh, 27th in the evening, he said, tomorrow you will take your journey to Makodi and meet my servant, Arome Osai, Makodi. I don't even know where Makodi is. So we came in 27th evening and told my sister, I'm traveling tomorrow, where are you going to? Makodi. You know him. I'll listen to him. Does he know you? I don't know, but I'll just go. So I entered the cab. I don't know one of those places, maybe a maybe day or one of those places, or Fadeyi, do they enter the east? Go to the east from Father in Lagos. Jibowu, yes, Jibowu. There's a bridge there. Okay, Jibowu. I now was, ah, I don't know that. I now remember that I had a friend, Sumaila Adegbe. We served together. I now picked my phone early in the morning. Sumaila, I, I have a problem. The Lord said I should go to see Tomakoti. He said to do what? I said to see Aposarama. Because that was the name Jesus dropped in my heart. I had not seen Sumaila for eight years. But the Lord said, call him. So I called him. Sumaila said, Makoti. And you can take a straight vehicle to Makoti, but you will prefer that because of the length of the journey. Why not stop at Abuja and then from Abuja you can, you can now go the following day. I said, okay. He said, but what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to see Apostle. He said, does he know you're coming? I said, I don't even know him. The Lord just said I should go. Meanwhile, some people left from here to see Apostle. They got to the door of his house and Papa did like he used to do. Your heart is not right. Go away. And he didn't see them. Ah. And I had that testimony. But God said, go. Smile and now said, oh, I'll call him now. Why was it that the person that the Lord told me to call, not only knew the way, could get to apostle, and in four minutes, Sumaila said, he's waiting for you. Ah. So slept in Abuja, got there the following day, and I called him, oh, that he's traveling to Jaws and all of that, and he's leaving that second money, I want to see him. Ah, Sumaila, how far now? He said, I'll call him again. So he called him again, and apostle said, and apostle didn't respond. Then the young man called from his house, and said, are you the pastor from Ogbomo shop. Apostle said, he's waiting for you. He's traveling, but you wait. And he told me the address of the house. The mail I dropped the phone, I forgot. Huh? The way the brother spoke, he spoke like God. So I didn't know how to approach him again. So I summoned courage. So I didn't hear you. And the brother, I don't know his face now. If I know his face, I will. I will, I will. So it's you, you, you. How can you forget? This is what I said. I said, okay, sir. 
So I went. And when I got to the gate, I stood afar because I didn't know how to enter. And then the lady said, are you Pastor Tolu? I said, yes. Say, come, come. What I was journeying on was not personal recognition. It was the strength of Sumaila's relationship with Apostle. That's what brought me. Because the first thing he said to me, you're the man from Ogbomoso. Your friend said, your friend said, what if Sumaila had broken his heart? He, he, except God shows mercy, he will have related with me on the strength of Sumaila's relationship. Can men come to God on the strength of your relationship with him? That's an intercessor. Sometimes it's not by prayer, it's by existence. You know the rest of the story. The children came one after the other. You, you watched Sound of Music before. You know how the students come and, and they go and they come. And the mama came. Oh, this is a beautiful mama. And then he came and my knees began to shake. Is this the man? The Lord showed me that I will have 12 apostles of my own and you'll be one of them. You're welcome. Anyway, I'm traveling. Take my number and I typed on phone and as I wanted to save, my phone deleted. Ha! This evil spirit came here again. What happened? I said, the number is erased. So he typed by himself. I remember I was using a Techno C6 white. So he typed, I saved. He said, you can go now. As I was about going out, he called me back. You didn't even invite me to come and preach for you. I said, the Lord just told me to come. He said, I will come every year. But go and pray. So it's not up to 10 years. But the bond is strong. But I'm saying the platform God used was a living relationship with him. Do you have a re living relationship with God that can bring a family into proximity with God? That can bring a city. Do you have it? Do you have it? Are they weeping because there's no one to say, God, because of me? That's what these first two parts are about. There is what you must become. And the Holy Spirit is available to make you that person. The church in our nation must become an interceding church. But that church will arrive at the place of intercession first by becoming intercessors. It must be a church that is above blame. We trust you, Jesus. Can you hold hands with your neighbor and ask that this week the Lord will be intentional with us? Show me all of my wrongs. Forgive me. Can you pray? And make me strong. Oh, save me. Restore my soul. For you're the God of a second chance. That's our cry. Show me. Show me. Show me all of my wrong. A week of revelation. Forgive me and make me strong. And make me strong. Oh, save me. Restore my soul for you.
my father we approach unto you as a family we understand the weight of responsibility that currently hangs upon us and we ask for mercy that this week you will exude unto us as individuals the things that disqualify and you will wash them away we will emerge with garments unstained, heads anointed with fresh oil. And that as you plunge us from Tuesday into the protocols that deliver to you families and persons and kingdoms, even nations, we will be vessels that you can use. For in a great house, there are diverse kinds of vessels vessels of gold, of silver, wood and of earth some unto honor, others unto dishonor the Bible says that if any man cleanse himself from the latter he shall become a vessel prepared meat for the master's use may this be our testimony thank you precious father in Jesus name we have prayed amen, God bless you